Hello, this is Dylan Anderson from Coda Bears. Today I'll be covering the Epicor REST v2 API keys and we'll mostly be working in the API key maintenance as well as the access scope screen where we can create access scopes for our API. There are a variety of new security options with the Epicor REST version 2 and today we'll show you how to create API keys, describe when they are useful and how to use your key to secure access to the areas you want the developer to access. You're not going to want to give somebody complete access to your system when they should only see one particular area. A good example use case for this is if your developer is a e-commerce developer and you have a, a custom e-commerce website developed for your company, you would generate an API key so that they can use that API key for the application to access the Epicor RESTful services so that it can communicate with Epicor, insert and grab and obtain data to show your customers. Um, but you wouldn't want to necessarily give the e-commerce platform or the developer access to functions they don't need. The Epicor REST API is a very powerful tool and can do pretty much everything that Epicor could do. So you're going to basically want to restrict some of, you know, like accounting functions for an e-com website. You're going to want to restrict things like in production management and inventory management because we don't really have e-com managed inventory or production. You would typically have like an e-com site only, you know, generate sales orders and, and possibly invoices um, but necessarily wouldn't need functionality to adjust a GL entry or create a job necessarily. So today let's begin. So go ahead and go into your Epicor. I'm working in version 10.2.600 a day and in your main menu of Epicor you'll go to system setup and then security maintenance and in security maintenance you'll see a variety of uh, different options here. The two we're going to be working with is the API key maintenance and the access scope. So access scope is basically like creating a security group. For your API key, the security group lists, you know, basically all the permissions that the API key has access to. So if we click on access scope, which is what we're going to want to do first before we jump into creating an API key, because we're going to define this access scope on our API key after it's created. I'm going to go ahead and create a new access scope. Then I'm just going to put uh, L L learn, which is lunch and learn, lunch and learn. Then I'm going to save my access scope. Next, I'm going to go to my um, services tab here, and you'll notice there's nothing currently selected. So this this access scope is not, um, even though we defined a, a ID, it's not fully created. So we'll go to file new here, and then click on new service. And then once you do new service, the server search will appear. You can click on search and then you'll have a variety of different business objects appear in this search. And again, for something like uh, e-commerce website, we're going to want more specifically some of the order um, business objects. And so I want them to be able to, with this API key, to communicate with the API to create a sales order. So we'll give them... We'll give this API key the sales order service so that they can use this service to create and get information about sales orders in the system. And you can add as many as you want, as, as many as the services you want. You can also define the methods that you want in, in the service. So let's say new method. I want to give them the sales order, uh, let's see. Just let's just say I just want them to be able to retrieve back information and you can narrow down you know what methods and services you want to give your access scope by using uh, tracing in Epicor. So basically you would turn on tracing and then perform your daily duties in the sales order entry screen or how you would want the external application to, to perform and then when you look at that trace log you'll see the service that it's using and all the methods that it calls to do that. So you would if you want the application to be able to do the same thing, you would pretty much replicate what the trace says and add all of your services and methods here. In addition to that, you can also, you know, specify what BAQs are can be accessed with this access scope and things like that. Um, so currently on the detail tab, we have active checked, which is great. It's not a system access scope, so that's unchecked, reasonable. 
and it can be accessed by all companies. It also gives you some other information about when it was created, when it's been updated, who it was created by, and who was it updated by, as well as the owning company, so the company that we've created this in. So now that we have an access code, I'm just going to go ahead and click Save. And I'm done for the screen for now. So our API key is only going to have access to the sales order service and to get sales orders. They are not going to be able to update um, or change anything on the sales order or even create a new sales order. They're just going to be able to get, get sales order data. So I'll close out of that. And then I'll jump over to my API key maintenance here. And then... So in API key maintenance, I'm going to click on the, the new uh, icon up here, and I can start creating my API, and I'm just going to do LLearn again, just like I did on my Accessscope for the Lunch and Learn presentation today, but it can be called whatever you whatever you want to use. It doesn't have to be the same as, as me, of course. Um, and then for my expiration date, if this is something that I don't really want to expire, I always set the date, you know, to be like something crazy ridiculous, um, like the year maybe 2121, there we go. And basically, I'm not going to be alive that long, so even if this stops working, <laughs> I'm not really going to care. Um, so my access scope, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the access scope search here, and then grab my... L learn access scope and then I'll select that and then if I hit save you have to be very mindful when you hit save you're creating your API key for the first time so and then you're gonna get this message that pops up that basically states that we're gonna show you the um, API key in plain text you better save it somewhere else give it to your developer I and mean, don't share this with anyone else because the whole world will be able to access your um, RESTful API, at least on the sales order, get by ID service. And we don't really want the whole world to have it. We just want the application and developer that's creating this application. Um, so once you click OK, this is the only time you're going to ever be able to see this in plain text. So I always recommend you copy this, throw it in a notepad, save it somewhere secure. And for example, so like if I close out of this or clear here, I have my API key already in my text file. I'll learn. Okay, now you'll see all these stars. So you'll never be able to see this key again. It is the this is oh, except for like the first six digits. So once you have your API key, which I have mine here, and we gave it access to the sales order to be able to get data from the sales order. So then you could navigate to your Epicor REST API, which to navigate there, it's typically HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, and then it's going to be your Epicor application server name. If you don't know this, get this from your IT department, forward slash, and then your instance. In my case, it's E10 train, but this might be E10 prod for year, E10 test and then forward slash API forward slash help and this is going to take you to a, a possibly this site is not secure all you have to do is click more information and click go to the web page anyway and the reason why this message is showing up is because it, a self-signed certificate is registered to this server so it's not an actually authenticated certificate but if your IT department makes the Epic Risk full API public they would typically buy a certificate signed by an authority and you wouldn't necessarily get this page neither will your custom application either if it's an internal application you can actually code for you know to get around this error programmatically um, but to go to the help page once you click go to, go on to the web page you're gonna have to log in the login is simply just an Epicor user account so that's your Epicor user and password not the one you use to sign into your computer and then by default, you're going to get a help page that kind of looks like this, especially if you're on 10 to 600 or a slightly um, earlier version than this. And you'll notice at the top right hand corner it says this is the link for Epicor REST API version 2. If you click on that, this will take you to the Epicor API version 2 help page. And then if you scroll down to our BO namespace, which we gave our access scope the sales order BO. So I can search it here, look for it down in the list, but I always like to use the search since it's available. And then here's my erp.bo.salesorderservice that I gave access to in my access scope for the API key. If I select that, 
you'll get to a swagger page that will load a list of methods that you can use. Once your methods load into the swagger page here, you'll look, uh, see, there's a lot of different methods going on here. You have get methods, post methods, delete methods, and the one that we actually gave access to would be the get by ID uh, method, um, and that might not be very transparent on this page here, except that this little description um, next to each of these methods. So as you can see here, it says calls the get by ID to retrieve a sales order item, and then like if you select this panel here, it'll show up more information about how you can call. You can drop your API key in here, your current company, these are all the required fields, um, and then so the company field again and then the order number that you, of the data that you want to get back so whenever you fill that out try it now you'll get back a, a data response that looks like this so these are all the fields um, and then next to these fields will be the the data that's in each field that tells you basically what's on that sales order this will conclude my lunch and learn today for the API key maintenance and on the Epicor rest version 2 thanks for watching